I feel like Ground Zeroes has sort of gotten a bad rap over the years. This was the first Metal Gear game I ever played. It's got a special place in my heart, and I want to give it the attention I feel like it deserves, being more than just a playable tech demo for the Phantom Pain, when in reality I could never call it worth its original price tag. It's definitely worth your time, and a few full playthroughs all the way around, not only for its gameplay action, but in terms of its story and bits of lore, despite being basically the hype game for the Phantom Pain. They really did go all out into it, giving it love and attention and little fun callbacks. With all that being said, let's get into it. Alright, let's roll. Don't worry, I kept my word. He didn't suffer long. How's it feel to play the traitor? We open up seeing that we're at Camp Omega, an American black site once a refugee camp for people fleeing Cuba. Ironic how a place used as a bit of safety and salvation is now a nightmare hellhole full of torture and just flat out monstrous methods of information gathering. It's a loophole for America to do unspeakable things to its prisoners without any fear of laws or repercussions getting in the way. We follow a mysterious new stranger dressed in all black as he walks over to Chico's cell. Looking down at him, clearly Chico has not been given any mercy despite his age. The man leans down, berittling him, mocking him, clearly just showing no mercy, no compassion for this child. How's it feel to play the traitor? No more war games. You're a real man now, soldier. As the tape plays, we hear the song Here's to You kick in, as we follow the man in black as Snake and Miller go over the admissions details. Ten days ago, we got reports that Paz was still alive. She survived. She was rescued by a Belizean fisherman who found her drifting in the Caribbean. So what's the plan? Silence her before we're compromised? No. I've got something else in mind. Right. Pass is our only link to Cypher. If she's still alive, we need her on our side. We finally get to the XOF unit's helicopters, as it seems they are removing the logos from it. They're clearly on a setup mission. Wherever they're going, they're gonna hit hard. Trojan horse is in! And leave devastated. It appears that this is an XOF unit seeming a sister unit of the Foxhound. As the choppers take off, leaving the camp, we see the legend himself. Kept you waiting, huh? Big Boss. Taking control of Boss, Miller over radio fizzes in on the mission to secure and rescue both Paz and Chico, with Miller acting as radio support, giving you both a rundown of the tutorial of the game and its mechanics, making your way down the camp, avoiding spotlights, patrolling units, and guarding soldiers, either sneaking by them or taking them out, whether non-lethal or, you know, lethally. Oh boy, I sure love being alive. Making our way down to the camp and finding Chico's cell outside in the pouring rain, truly showing just how they don't even consider these prisoners people anymore. They are just basically animals to them to be used and then killed off when no longer needed. Getting Chico's attention and opening his cell, he has a full on panic attack, seeming terrified of Snake at this point. With no choice but to subdue Chico to prevent attention being drawn to the both of you. Taking Chico over to the nearest pickup zone, he tells us that Paz is dead, saying how they killed her in front of him, even giving Snake a cassette tape for proof. After putting Chico into the helicopter and heading back into the camp, Miller and Snake, listening in on the tape, deduce where Paz might be based on the sounding areas of the tape. 
following the clues that were left behind and or interrogating soldiers for information, we make our way down to the boiler room, where we finally find Paz. Getting her free and making our way out of the base and down to the pickup zone, we hear snippets of her trying to stay conscious. It's the only one. <laughs> making our way back to the helicopter and heading out of Camp Omega, we assume everything is finally going to start being in the clear. However, we're not out of the woods yet, as Chico discovers that Paz has a massive scar across her stomach. And fearing the worst, they have no choice but to operate to check to make sure it's nothing planted as a setup. Without any anesthesia or anything, Snake and Chico have to hold down pause as the field medic operates right on her. And let me tell you something, man, it is brutal. It is the most, I, I, have, I can't even find many game scenes where I just squirm watching it, even 10 years later. Boss. But they were right to do this as he soon pulls out a brick of C4. And as if just to add insult to injury, it has a little peace sign drawn on it, as if one final screw you from the man with no skin. Tossing it out the door and seeming to stitch her back up, everything seems finally okay. Until we hear the chopper trying to radio into Mother Base. And that's when we see it. It was no coincidence. It was a setup from the start. XOF played Mother Base for fools, and they all know it. Making an emergency landing, Big Boss himself goes into the field of combat, trying his best to hold up as many XOF units as he can, even man to take out a helicopter as Commander Miller makes his way to the chopper to make an escape, though most of his men are gunned down in the process, leaving Snake in a bitter, brutal rage, taking Heading into the chopper, Miller is furious, fuming practically as he feels like a fool for letting Cypher play him so easily. They played us like a damn fiddle! Give it back! This isn't right, that was ours! Making his way over to Paz, he demands answers right there, right then. Though, the only thing he receives is a spit of blood in his face from her. What the f As she panically makes her way up, pushing everyone out to the side as she makes her way to the chopper's door. Boss tries to warn her that it's gone, it's okay. She doesn't believe him, jumping out as a massive explosion goes off. Sending the helicopter hurtling into an XOF unit's one. That's when the two choppers collide and everything cuts to black. Now, if you have no idea who these characters are, then why are you watching this video? But seriously, if you've never played Peace Walker, you'd be so lost on what's happening. Even if you're a veteran Metal Gear fan, skipping just Peace Walker leaves so many questions open. Like, Miller? You mean that guy from Metal Gear Solid who Liquid pretended to be through half the game? Hey, dear brother. Liquid. Pause? Oh, you mean that girl from Phantom Pain who had her memory erased or something like that or whatever? And Chico? I I'm sorry, who who was that guy again? You, you mean Hector or something? What's that? No! See, this isn't just a build-up for Phantom Pain. This is the send-off to Peace Walker. This mission literally only takes place a few months after the events of Peace Walker. It is really the finale for that game, giving it a good send-off and a conclusion to open the door for the next story and the next chapter in the Metal Gears' lore. And I gotta say, it's a damn good send-off. If this was the original ending in the game, I guarantee you people would be wondering, what the heck happened? 
Like, it, it's such a great send-off and a great little ending that opens the door for so many possibilities. And I can't wait to one day talk about those possibilities. Despite going over all that, the main story is pretty short. If you're just doing the main objectives, you can beat it in about an hour if you're flawless, and even faster if you know where everything is. But there's more to it than just the main story. There's also the side ops, and they go from classic military missions such as hits or intel recovery to absolutely insane off-the-wall shenanigans that I absolutely love Metal Gear for. Like, you, you can't make some of this stuff up, and yet it all just feels, yep, that's Metal Gear, and I wouldn't have it any other way. There really is a lot of love and passion to this game, no matter how short it is. There was effort, and I really feel like that needs to be appreciated more because they could have just done very little with these, but yet they still put the time and effort into each one to make them each feel unique, distinct, and their own kind of style. Here, let's get into it. We'll start with the side ops very first one. So this mission is pretty straightforward. You're sent into Camp Omega to find and take out two people, a sniper and his pointer. But they give you more than just nameless NPCs that are different every single time or have random patrols that you would see anywhere. They have distinct paths, they have distinct routes, they have distinct locations, so you can memorize it each time you play it. And they even have backstories and voice acting for these characters, like specific models for these characters. The pair were in Laos together, but retired after the US withdrew its forces. They were a sniper spotter team. In country, they were known as Glass and Palettes. The eye and the finger. If you just gave it a little bit more effort, this could have been an entire main story mission if it wasn't just a side op. And it's pretty simple. You go in, take them out, get out. Not much, no more, no less. Maybe a few little hand things here and there if you want to be sneaky about it, but it really is just that. And it's still fun. It's a great little thing. Definitely worth a playthrough for that one. Next, it's another relatively simple mission. Fly in by helicopter and pick up an intel agent who has requested pickup. Though, things suddenly turn like a crazy action movie thriller twist, as you're not going in silent at all. That's not even an option. You are flying in guns blazing, giving this man cover, who has been built up to be like this massive critical role in the mother base operation. His knowledge, his intel is unmatched. So he's gotta be good or something, you know, he's gotta be a legend. Giving him cover fire as he drives away trying to find a secure location, even being dropped off and taking on all of Camp Omega, from its soldiers, to its rocket experts, to its freaking helicopters and vehicles. You fight it all off and take it all on. And as you pick up this agent and take him back to the helicopter for emergency pickup and shoot your way out, it's finally revealed that this man is none other than Kojima himself. Confirmed. The target is safe. Spouting the iconic line, I love it. I love how Kojima put himself in the game, built himself up, and just knows how to have fun. It's like this perfect little wink to the audience, like, yeah, I know, I'm kind of cool, but you know what? It's really fun. It is the perfect reason why to love Metal Gear, why you can take it seriously, but don't take it too seriously, if you know what I mean. Just have fun with it. So this one's actually a little bit different than the others. Your objective isn't to take anyone out or rescue anyone, it is to go in, meet up with a double agent, retrieve the intel from him, and get out. However, there's a twist. This double agent doesn't actually work for you and will still spot you, alert guards, and try to shoot you if he spots you. The only way to make the transition happen is to spot him, know it's him, sneak up behind him, and put him in a headlock to warn him that it's you. We're you're, you're here for- you know, hey, not so tight, huh? Afterwards, he's still considered an enemy and will try to take you out if you get caught. However, of course nothing's ever truly easy. He tells you that he doesn't actually have the intel on him. That he put it in a watchtower for safekeeping. Leave you and B, you know, either letting him go, taking him out, or you know, taking him out. You make your way to the watchtower to retrieve the tape. But it looks like it might have been a setup- <laughs> 
Now, either you have Reflex on, which I do, I'm not skilled enough not to use it. You either get caught and have to make an emergency way and hide out or just go out guns blazing or you sneak out. And yeah, it was a really sneaky move of that guy, which I love. It's like he's not even like trying to be your friend. He's trying to be like, you know what, if he gets caught, whatever. But yeah, making a way out and it turns out that this tape is actually a recording of the skinless man from earlier in the story mission giving like his whole life story, his origins of why he is the way he is. And it's cool giving a little bit more detail on that, using the side up to do a little bit of world building and hype up for this man. All hell took from me was this skin, this outer peel that marked me human. Pretty cool. I like how the little detail is that he's doing all this while he has brutally tortured a man and is just mocking him relentlessly. Showing that yet again, he has no mercy and seems to enjoy it a little bit. This one might be the actually the simplest one, but with the biggest twist. Being hired by the JCS, Big Boss's goal is simple. Move in, take out three anti-air emplacements, which is just a fancy way of saying anti-air weapons. You move in, take them out, but the moment you take out the third one, a timer goes off and you are on high alert as an airstrike is now moving guns in coming from that location, giving you barely any time to make your way out. And the crazy thing is, despite all of this, you're actually hinted at a little bit more having to this mission, like about prisoners you can rescue and extract. Now, maybe they'll have a little bit more info because it seems kind of crazy that now all of a sudden the main goal was not to destroy the base, but the JCS wanted to take over via helicopter and control the base. So this seems kind of completely out of left field. With no time to ask questions, Big Boss guns it to the helicopter extraction, making his way out as he sees the base go up in flames in a matter of seconds. Alright, so this one is definitely the most insane side op, because get this, um, Mother Base has been alerted that there are body snatching aliens, parasites, I don't know, there's body snatchers and human imitators taking over Camp Omega. And because Big Boss is unprepared for this and just doesn't seem like it's quali- doesn't seem like he's qualified for it, they hire Raiden from the future from Metal Gear Reverence to go in and take them out. And for his payment, get this, it's just the XOF patches from the story mode. Yeah, that's, that's all he wants and I love it. This one's very simple but so bad shit insane fun because you're just going in taking them out and there's no repercussions you can take out who you want when you want fight off a giant army of them afterwards and get the hell out it's great it's crazy it's corny but it's amazing all at the same time it's just full-on metal gear and i love it i just absolutely love it Okay, so this one is just a massive love letter to OG Metal Gear fans. Like, it is literally the only objective. Recreate pictures from the original Metal Gear Solid from Shadow Moses. This is a love letter to the OGs. Those who grew up with the series until then, and those who just absolutely everything about it. Recreating scenes from Shadow Moses, it's just, it's just fun. It's just a fun love letter that is just truly for the most hardcore of hardcores. Granted, it wasn't really my thing, but I can definitely see how someone who's playing this for the first time, who is a big, die hard, especially Metal Gear Solid 1 fans, they would love it. It's such a nice little detail and it's just so sweet. Not my favorite thing, but Definitely, definitely appreciate the love and attention to it. Gotta give that one a play if you're an OG. Now, we're talking about the bread and butter of MGS5, and that is the gameplay. Just make sure you wait until there aren't any other soldiers around. Spit it out. Mm -hmm. 
Holy crap! First of all, I just want to say this game looks amazing! Kept you waiting, huh? Ten years later and it just still looks brand new. I don't know how they did it. I don't know what they used to do it. Well, I know what they used to do it. It's called the Foxhound engine, which is amazing. It's what it's probably like my favorite engine in gaming, and I didn't even know I could have a favorite engine in gaming. It just looks so good. The characters all feel like them all the enemies just look you distinct and similar all at the same time like the perfect npcs and the freedom for each sandbox mission oh my lord you know that mission i told you about earlier for those eliminating those two guys um guess what you don't actually have to eliminate them no you can move in take both of them out and that's it you can go in guns blazing take everyone out until you drop them especially like you have so much freedom of choice. You don't even have to kill them. You could sneak in, not kill anyone, use only suppressors or your fists to knock people out, choke them out, put them into a truck, and drive out without even killing them. Your main goal was to kill them. You don't even have to do that. Like, let me just explain this for a second, the amount of detail and freedom you have in this. Say you want to hold up a guy for information. Simple enough. But, but, there's like... A million ways to do that. You can sneak up behind him with a rifle and hold him at gunpoint. You can knock him out and then point a gun to him again while he's on the ground. You can put him in a chokehold and demand that he talks or gives you information. Or tell you can hold him at knife point and have him either call his buddies over, tell you information that he knows, or simply just knock him out or take him out. And it's just there's so many ways to do this and so much creativity and freedom with it. You can knock him out, want to wake him up and get more information out of him, wake him up, see what else he might know or if he can call anyone over, knock him out again, and yeah, it just doesn't end. Like, the freedom is so advanced. And there's a good reason why people have sunk hundreds and hundreds of hours into Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. And Metal Gear's Ground Zero, it's got a good chunk of that feeling to it. There's a reason why this is a great, great tech demo, as people call it. I just, I love it. I love it, and it's such a great feeling. And it's perfect if you just need something to get in and get out and something you just want to beat in an afternoon. It's perfect for it. That being said, there is the major red flag of this game, and unfortunately, despite time healing this wound, it's always going to plague it a little bit. And that was the $30 release tag. Now, despite all of this I told you about, and the fact that you could go through and have to work through every mission and eventually try to get an S rank on each one if you want, you could still probably beat this and do that in say about 7 hours, maybe at most 8 if you're trying to do S rank perfectly, like everything absolutely perfect and master it and speedrun it. That's not really worth $30, especially with how Fanda Pain was going to come out at 60 But that's just Konami being Konami. And as a veteran Yu-Gi-Oh player, I am all too familiar with their greed. That being said, I don't want to penalize a game for what the company did to it, if that makes sense. Like, this still has so much love, passion, and care put into it. It's a great send-off for Peace Walker, a great introduction to Phantom Pain. It truly deserves a lot more love and respect that it's gotten over the years. And instead of just being dismissed, it should be appreciated for what it is. A short, great introduction to Metal Gear if you just want to give it a try for the first time. You got nothing to lose. Plus, these days, it's pretty often bundled in with the Phantom Pain. And that goes on sale so often that you can get this basically for pennies at the most. So yeah, I truly believe Ground Zeroes is worth one full playthrough and one full exploration no matter what. Even if you're getting into the series for the first time, don't skip this title. You will be, trust me, it's well worth your time and effort. So yeah, to say this game had an impact on me is kind of an understatement. The fact I still remember how I got it and when I played it is <laughs> amazing. 
I got it for free with Xbox Live Gold just out of the blue and I decided, you know what, I'll just try it. And it was worth it so much. Now, maybe getting it for free did help shape my opinion, but I could not wait to get the Phantom Pain. I was gonna get that bad boy as soon as I could. And ironically, I ended up forgetting about it, you know, school, everything, it was a different time. And I just didn't play Phantom Pain for a while. But ironically, the way this game was set up and the way it set everything to go into it, that actually worked better in the long run that I went a while bef without playing it than playing Phantom Pain. It, it just worked for it. That's an experience I'll go to in the future, but yeah, I'd love to tell you guys more, but I'll- I'd love to tell you guys more, and I'll- Soon, but thank you so much for your time, and- Can you hear me?